At the core of the Star League lay one family, the great house behind it all, and behind the Terran hegemony. That family was the Camerons. Much like every other nation of the Inner Sphere, this neo-feudalist state was as tied to the family that ruled it as it was to the planets and cultures within. Jonathan Cameron died in 2738 and would be succeeded by his son, Simon. Simon would be the second last Cameron to rule the Star League, or the Terran Hegemony for that matter. His decisions, fortunes, and misfortunes would shape the centuries to come. It's noteworthy that Simon was not just a political adherent to neo-feudalism, but was also a member and believer in the modern chivalrist movement, which believed in attempting to reintroduce the code of chivalry into noble society, government, and their own personal affairs. This had a direct impact on the Star League itself beyond just Simon's personal quirks, as this appeared across the cultures of the Inner Sphere with his promotion of it. Simon would inherit the problem of wanting to keep a degrading empire together. The periphery almost universally had grown resentful once more of the Star League and its intrusion on their worlds and in their lives. This attitude was widespread among the common people who saw their realms pillaged for resources by Inner Sphere companies, who were able to plunder with reckless abandon as laws protecting these states even in a limited capacity had been changed under the First Lord Jonathan Cameron. The First Lord of the Star League, seeing the political situation deteriorating, shifted the military resources of the SLDF to the borders of the periphery, fortifying it and preparing to deal with rebellion. The Rimworld's Republic seemed to be the only quote loyal unquote periphery state in all of this, but some were beginning to notice the military buildup. Even with their attempts to mask it through using vassals as well as militias. Thus, the Star League forces were still deployed along its borders. While these events were unfolding, House Davian would begin to become remote from the Star League. The slow intervention on behalf of the League, as well as the aftermath of its military intervention to cease hostilities between itself and the Draconis Combine, led to a deep mistrust of the League. Davian, once the League's greatest supporter outside of Terra, now sought greater autonomy as it viewed its own situation in a much more isolationist lens. This marked two of the six great houses already moving away from the League as an institution, as the Draconis Combine had already started to do so. Worse yet, tensions would boil over with the Draconis Combine and the Lyran Commonwealth over privateering activities. Both the Free Worlds League and Capella Confederation as well began to quietly build up their militaries and began to look out for their own interests as the League seemed to fray more and more. Raids and belligerent activities began to appear widespread between the successor states. SLDF forces were issued out to prevent these bush wars and raids from escalating, only to have the opposite effect, as all parties began to see warships being put into play, these being the most dangerous weapons humanity had to offer. Communications between the lords had degraded to the point where even in meetings between states, members only treated one another with open suspicion, barring only directly saying their accusations outright. In the midst of all this, Simon would go on a political campaign to try to solve this instability, trying to win over the common people of his vast realm. If he could not keep the League together with the ruling class, he may have with the people. Unfortunately, First Lord Simon Cameron would die in a mining accident on the border of the Rimworld's Republican Lyran Commonwealth. The facts around his death would be in dispute of the official record, nearly indefinitely. During these sad times, it is the responsibility of all of us, the Council Lords, to ensure that the Star League survives and that the Camerons continue on as its unbroken heart. Joint Statement of the High Council After his death, the only legal heir was his lone child, 
Richard Cameron II, who was only eight years old. The boy's mother had died several years prior as well. No other members of the house were available, capable, or willing to take the position. A regency was put in place by the other house lords, with one Alexander Karensky heading it as the regent and protector. It is also noteworthy that at this stage, the five remaining lords of the League opted not to dissolve the Star League, though this is credited with them wanting a weak government in the center of the League for them to amass more power for themselves in an ever-loosening partnership. General Karensky was the top military official within the SLDF at the time of his appointment. A talented member of the Kerensky family, he would rise to the ranks, starting as a humble mech warrior, before reaching higher and higher points in his career. Often through being honest, courageous, and talented. He was seen as a fitting and safe choice to be made the protector of the realm and of House Cameron during this time. It also helped that he had been a good friend to Simon Cameron, the father of Richard. The problem with all of this was, Kerensky was given an impossible task. Because of tensions with the periphery growing so much, and because of the machinations from the House Lords themselves, they refused to allow Kerensky to resign his post within the SLDF. This meant Kerensky was the protector of the realm, and the regent of the realm, as well as the man responsible for raising Richard Cameron and his upbringing. On top of that, he would likely be responsible for dealing with wars that were coming very soon. To the House Lords, this was perfect. Kerensky would be too busy to govern, and too busy to prevent them from gaining more power within the League for themselves. The political situation would degenerate on the periphery soon enough, and Richard Cameron would come under the influence of the one held most accountable for the final death blow to the Star League, Stefan Amaris. Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. In our next video, we will be covering the second part of the fall of House Cameron. With that, I'll catch you in the comment section below.